Today in No Man's Sky I'm going to show you how to get all 14 of the new derelict freighter decoration blueprints in this No Man's Sky guide. Complete with a really good location to farm them, a location to simultaneously get your 250 light year S class freighter technology upgrades and a quick look at the polished models. So first let's jump to where to get them as well as how it really works in the spawning and what exactly you have to loot to get them. So the first place we're going to pop to is in Isentum. So you'll need to be in Isentum to access this specific derelict freight we're going to go to. The address is Bird, Sun, Rocket, Triangle, Triangle, Dragonfly, Whale, Sun, Base, Whale, then two boats. Something important to note about this particular address. This particular location will not give you max 250 light year hyperdrives it will give you s class tech upgrades which is fine for everything but fuel and hyperdrive because everything other than fuel and hyperdrive is a specific 15 percent always fuel goes up to a maximum 20 percent and this particular system drops 19. also where is my ship it's behind the portal at all the hyperdrive strength technology upgrades that this derelict freighter in this system drops will be 245, so not quite the max, but still not bad. But uh, don't worry, I'll go over a 250 for the end of the video. This one just has 37 blue crates, and that is very important when you're trying to get these blueprints. So just use the old emergency broadcast receiver and start pulsing. Just a quick note, you can get a free emergency broadcast receiver from Helios once per week on the Anomaly. You can also, that's the tree dude by the way, you can also uh, buy them for 5 million, one per day from the space station. But after that first one it goes to 10 million, then the third one is 20, the fourth and every other after will be 30 million. So uh, if you want to do it on the cheap, then just do get like one every day or something, or a couple every day. Obviously there are other ways to find these and stuff, there's a lot of information about derelict freighters. I made a huge guide which I'll link down below, so uh, check it out if you want to learn more. Now, the importance of this particular one, having 37 of this type of crate, this one is a different crate so we don't need to worry about that. But, the blue crates, once you're inside the freighter, that look like this, are the only ones that can drop the blueprints for those 14 new items. So let's head inside. Now for this video I'll do a very swift run just to show you where all these crates are. Ignore that room, that's a dead end because it's got the circle and the arrow with the sort of magenta background. So don't worry about that, there aren't any blue crates in that room. The only crates in this room are this one here, which gave me a random procedure generated item. It's actually quite rare, it's like less than a 1% chance to get that, so interesting. Uh, we can just avoid that particular security risk. There's one here, and uh, then there's one here. Don't go too close while it's a good sun. We can do this entire run while avoiding security. So uh, now those three from this room. Now one of the really important things is that essentially there is only a 5.8% chance you'll get a blueprint from one of these. But because there are 37 on this particular freighter, we actually have a pretty good shot at getting like two per run. So there's another couple here. This is just to the left as you came into this room. Salvage frigate models as well. The blue crates are actually really good. So for this one, I'm just going to wait for that to go that way. And then we'll grab the top one uh, just under it and then mo keep moving while we're doing it. We can grab that out of the way of that. And then head to this room where there are just two. Uh, and we'll have to kill a few things here. Why have I got mining beam on? As soon as I've finished him, let's turn to. I've got Pulse Splitter on this save. There we go. Uh, so I'd recommend the Scatter Blaster for this. So one here. Uh, let's kill him. And then there's just one around here. And then that's this room done. There are a couple of them. I mean, there's only two in this room, so if you want the speed, and you don't care about the efficiency of units to your crates, then you could just skip this room. Uh, the majority of them are in the next room we're actually going to, which is quite mentalness. Uh, there's two here as well, so we just avoid that and then go in and get these and get that. Right, so we haven't actually got any yet, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. 
Now, um, here's the second terminal to this way. There's only a couple on this side, so just grab that. There are a bunch of those little flying machine dudes in here, so we'll want to avoid them. Uh, go this way through the middle, get here. Here. You will get a nice amount of nanites and stuff, because you can get Hadal cores and Larval cores from these particular ones as well. Uh, where's he shooting from? So grab this one, just on the end in the middle here. Uh, stay away from the left side, so we'll get that on the way back down. So grab all these around the edge. Where's he gone? There he is. And don't forget to get your protection up. There it is. Hello there, Mr. Security Git. Right, there's pretty much, I think, all the security ones in this one. Um, then we'll just go around this top end and this right the door we came in is just like that way We can just about see the stuff through there So we've basically gone along the right side and through the middle and come to the uh, top left from that perspective So I'll just grab these two here move into this room There are a couple in here, but not too many um, Definitely worth coming in here though So let's ignore that get that that and then move around this side we can completely ignore that grab this one here and then just pop around to this side and grab these two Swishadelphia you may as well grab that because that's either units or nanites so uh, yeah I mean it's not gonna take up space then we're just gonna run basically down this side which is the other side we haven't gone to yet there's uh, three here and then another three just past these lockers. And Swisher Delphia. Oh, inventory's full, that's not good. So just finish grabbing that, I think. There we go, we've got these two here. Then there's just a couple more left. I've actually been really unlucky in getting the blueprints on this account, it would seem, this save. Uh, there's just these last two here. And no, we're very unfortunate. Unfortunately, we didn't get a single one in this run. So just so you see, essentially when it comes up, it will just come up in the middle of your screen as like a tool tip that you've got it and uh, jobs are good. Now, as you can see here, at least I don't think it changes for the platforms and stuff, but basically uh, the sixth one in, sixth page in, it, uh, it goes from here, which is the sampler containment, uh, all the way down here to the industrial barrel. Um, these are all lit up because I've got them all on my survival save. We got them in the stream on Sunday. Um, I have not got them on this save yet, but uh, these are all the different items. And yeah, so that's pretty swish. Definitely, I think it seems to be a wide agreement. This is probably the best one, the shelving, just because that's awesome. It looks really cool and we've freaking got shelving now, so that's very cool. Uh, this is the last room, the engineering room. Uh, there is none, there's no uh, blue crates. So remember that these blue crates here are the only ones in the entire freighters that can drop those blueprints. It's about a 5.8% drop chance. So you should get a little over sort of one per 20. So probably around like one per 19 or something. I'm not quite sure. I haven't done the full amount. It, it doesn't really, it's not really that important. <laughs> um, so this run that has 37 should give you around two on average. I'm not sure why it didn't give me even one this time. That's just bad luck on the survival save on the stream on Sunday. On one of the runs, I've got five. So, uh, yeah, it really is RNG just uh, doing its thing. Um, because this one doesn't have the max hyperdrive and the max fuel, um, it's great for the other technology, but it's also really good for the bulkhead. So if you haven't got, if you haven't fully upgraded your freight yet, I'd recommend doing this one so you can get 37 of those crates. It's a really easy run. Also, you can uh, get your bulkheads off this one, and it doesn't matter whether, like there's no stat for the bulkhead. Also, quick note that if you choose extract nanites, that will be four to 600 nanites. So there's a chance of getting better than you would otherwise, slightly better, an average of 500 would be, yeah, just slightly better than the 480 you'd get from the S-Class technology module. I don't need any tech modules, so I'm just gonna pick nanites, even though it's kind of terrible. I can also confirm that the nanites received at the end is not consistent per the freighter. So it will be between four and 600 at random each time. I may have already checked that and just forgotten. 
I don't feel the need to show this uh, as I haven't actually ran it myself yet and it could take quite a while to confirm the 250 light year upgrade from this but there is a post on the No Man's Sky Quantum Exchange by someone called Draxter who has uh, found a freighter that drops 250 light year S-Class hyperdrive freighter technology units. Now this does only do 19% for the fuel so it's not max there but it's max on pretty much everything else. So this would be a really good one to do. It's apparently a two minute run, really quick, no real fight. Been confirmed by multiple people in the comments of the post, as well as people on my Discord. The address is on screen now, and uh, yeah, that, in case you haven't seen my derelict freighter guide, that S-Class as well as the stat is consistent over all galaxies for that address. So no matter what galaxy you're in, Dialing that address and doing the Derelict Freighter there will be able to get you the 250 light year hyperdrive. But the layout will be different. So one of the galaxies is going to be quite easy, another one's going to be difficult. Apparently the easy one is Euclid, so that's great because that's where most people are. So check that out there to get your 250 light year hyperdrives. Thank you, Draxter, for that find. That's really awesome, and thank you for sharing it as well because well, that's one of the best things about this community, isn't it? We all share our discoveries and all benefit from it. Now, let's have a quick closer look at these models. So this is the little area I set up last time to show the uh, show them off, really, from the experimental. Uh, it seems they've changed a few things, but you still can't change the colours massively. But it seems to differ per one. So let's try the red. Um, so, so it seems this one has no part of it that you can change the colour on yet and you also cannot change the texture. When it comes to this, the palette, you cannot change anything on that yet either. Oh, actually, you might be able to change those washers around the bolts. Let's have a quick look at that, closer look. Yes, okay, on the palettes, you can change the washers around the screws. That's it, though, as far as color goes. I imagine the same may be for this, but it does not appear so. So let's uh, look at the old bench. So with the bench, you can change, yes, you can change the actual sort of the area, that uh, sort of leather type area, the top bit, but that's the only part of it you can change. So you can change that between different colors. Uh, red actually seems to not give it red. It gives it a sort of light gray. And can you change the, you cannot change the texture on this either. I'm hoping they'll add this in the future. I was hoping it would be in this patch. Uh, with this, you can change the color and texture of this X band. So I've actually put in the wooden texture on that and it looks really good. We can turn this red, we can change the texture. So there's brick, uh, that looks slightly different and also quite cool. So that's the most, that's the highest one you can change currently. Let's check this one. I can't see anything you can change on this particular crate. Let's see this big one. Okay, a few things changed there, like these uh, metal areas here, and uh, this bit here, this went green. Um, so there are a few small areas on this, and around the bolts as well. Not super big or anything. Let's see if we can change the texture. I can't see, if you can change the texture, there's no notable change to it. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like you can change the texture on these, but you can change the color slightly. Uh, again, uh, HG, that would be really awesome if you could actually change the, make it so we can change the color and texture on these. Um, this again seems these small red areas around like the bolts and the trim, so you can change those. Um, let's check this one, the containment. Okay, you can change the in, inside part, which appears to be a smaller version of that giant light we have. You can change that to red, and can you change the texture? Not noticeably. Um, when you change this, does the creature inside change? No, it doesn't. The creature inside... Oh, the creature... In, no, the creature inside does not appear to change. And with these... Yeah, the, there's no notable change on this small one. So the shelving, this would be a really cool one to have a change. So let's uh, try this. Yes, a few things change. So just these red bars here. Um, those bars are so small that I doubt having any kind of texture on them would be even notable. So all we've got on this is like these red bars. 
um, in those three locations. Let's check this other crate. Okay, yeah, a few little bits of trim here again. So just very small amounts of trim. Uh, this one didn't seem to change at all. Uh, no, the light does not change at all. How about the heater? Oh, sadly, the heater doesn't either. It seems maybe that small amount of writing. No, the writing doesn't change either. So nothing changes on that. And lastly, the locker. So the locker has nowhere that changes colour when we do that. I'll just double check the texture on this. I can't see any wooden texture being applied. So yeah, unfortunately not much can be changed. A little bit can. This one seems to be the most dramatic. Uh, this crate here and also the bench. The workbench has uh, its top area. Uh, does change the pleather-esque look. Uh, purple makes it like a light sort of blue-gray. Uh, let's try black. Black turns it brown, which is odd. <laughs> and the white turns it red. So yeah, there's a, um, play around with that one for sure because that changes really strangely. Yes, um, yeah, they all look very cool. They, I'm really glad we've got them. If anyone from HG does watch these videos, it would be great if we could have more control over the colour and the texture. That would be really cool. Um, obviously with something so deta detailed um, that has many different colours on it, it might be tricky to do that. But I'm sure there is some way. So like maybe keep that white, but we can change the black and orange. Or even just like this, most of these have three colours on, three primary colours um, that cover the out of bits, which is good. We could have one neutral that stays and then we get the two, the primary primary and the secondary from these, which uh, stays, which we can change. And uh, as well, also texture would be amazing. The wooden texture looks amazing on uh, metallic surfaces, so that would be really cool. Um, thank you guys for watching. This has been a uh, quick guide to show you the best places to get these blueprints and how to get them and yeah, Good luck in your farming. These are going to really liven up your bases. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to Zane's World for more guides, tips and tricks, live streams, let's plays, news and everything. If you want to help support the channel, we've got a Patreon, YouTube memberships, as well as a Teespring merch store with loads of tri-blend t-shirts and premium poly-blend hoodies. All with the Zane's World touch. And last but not least, we have Discord and a website full of awesome, useful information, and the Discord is just full of awesome people, as well as information, actually. Um, there's usually someone around to answer your questions and other such things. So thank you for watching, folks, and have a fantastic day.